Hola community, I'm Pablo Vázquez with another episode of Blender 2 for in the blah 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 143 episodes of Blender today. Today, today, what a special day is today. We have a new editor alert, a new uh, bunch of notes alerts, a um, new sculpt tools, a user interface, uh, EV performance improvements, and uh, so much more. So let's uh, let's get to it. I have three announcements to make. I have three announcements to make. So the first one is that Blender.org has been hacked. Yep. Some people have a lot of time on their hands, or some bots, um, and uh, they look for popular websites. The Blender website has thousands and thousands of visits per day. So uh, yeah, it was under attack last night. So um, the Blender Studio admins and developers, Sergey was up, uh, Danny troubled. Thank you for uh, working on it so hard. And Francesco as well. So uh, yeah, the website is alive for downloading if you click on download you're gonna be taken into the um the mirror the official mirrors where you can download blender um the builds have been tested so everything should be fine and considered safe to use um, of course if you use blender via steam or the windows store there's no problem or snap um but um yeah the developer the weekly and uh, developer website the wiki um all the other sites should be fine blender chat is also fine it's just uh, just just some links here like i've i've uh, made it so you cannot click on some of these links like i deemed them but uh you can still click in some of these and you probably yeah you're gonna be taken into a uh an available website that you have to you can see in the internet archive so thank you internet archive um if you haven't ever donated or have you ever seen it uh, internet archive is the best thing in the world and um i i recently learned that you can actually donate to keep the internet archive going and um i've, I've done it and it's uh, super nice because they keep history alive i found my first website here and it's embarrassing so I'm not gonna talk about it. You know what I'm gonna talk about? Two other things. One, um, Blender Developers Live. Today there was another episode of Blender Developers Live. Um, I There are already four of them, I think. Uh, in this episode, uh, Sergey went through... I don't know how he's even awake. He was up until like 4 or 5 a.m. with the... At least <laughs> with the Blender hack. Um, but somehow he went uh, ahead and um, did a live stream today showing the back end like how he made the uh, it's a fix about predicting the past nice title by the way it's about the motion tracker and when you track backwards when instead of track ahead like forward in time you play backwards and you track that and there was an issue so now it's um yeah it's now fixed there so the other announcement that I wanted to make is that on this weekend, on this weekend, there is the World Blender Meetup Day. 24 hours of community meetup connecting to a worldwide online conference. So if you didn't get enough of the Blender conference last year, um, the World Blender Meetup Day, it has been happening for a few years already. And um, it gathers people from all over the world. It's a 24 hour event, so you can binge watch it or you can <laughs> you can uh, watch it at any time whenever you wake up you can tune in and uh, see here there should be a schedule they mentioned that it will be a schedule today i asked them hey do you have a schedule for monday and they said yes but i just realized that america at least the united states as far as i know they changed uh, already changed daylight saving time and in europe we haven't um the uh, European daylight saving change is on two weeks at the end of March um, so it's not happened yet so maybe that's why not, it's not here but you should check it out worldblendermeetupday.org that is all with the announcements I think it's moment is the time that we should get into the news of the day okay how is the chat going by the way we have a thread already made by Blender Defender thank you and the there are questions already yeah there is a number of questions already so you can leave your questions that i'm gonna be answering or try to answer towards the end of the show how's the chat going everything is all right yes is there a discord server for blender.org no blender doesn't have an official discord server um, there are communities that have 
their own. Like, I think if you go to blender.org slash com. Oh, <laughs> it's broken. Ah, maybe there is a copy in Internet Archive. Yeah, of course. I love you, Internet Archive. Um, but yeah, there is a blender.org slash community uh, page where you can see the communities that are available. Um, the. Uh, Discord, it's uh, there is a there is a bunch of Discord servers. I have one for my Spanish uh, fellows, Spanish-speaking people, but there is no official server. Like they're not official. So um, yeah. So take whatever is said there, I guess, with a grain of salt. <laughs> Next uh, questions. Let's just go into the uh, what's 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 new in Blender. That's my own question. What is Blender? What has changed since last week? Well, let me tell you, there's cult improvements, UI, Chris Pencil, a new editor, as I mentioned before, which I'm not connecting directly with Blender uh, geometry nodes yet, because it's more than that. It's way more than that. Let's get to it. So, first, dun dun dun, sculpt mode, sculpting mode. There are two new operators. One, for initializing phase sets, you know those squares for face sets based on the face sets boundaries this was um, demoed like the face sets boundary workflow was demoed in um, Pablo Dovaro's live stream that he made that he did on on this channel if you haven't seen it uh, already you should check it out it's called sculpt expand um, it, it's it's more than expanding but he was using some of these um, um, tools as he is showing here so it makes a initializes a face set based on the boundaries, so on the borders of the surroundings of that um, face set. The other operator that it's new is for mask initialization. So the same way you can initialize face sets, now you can also initialize masks. So um, this operator initializes mask values for the entire mesh. It supports different modes for initializing, initializing those values and more will be added in the future. And uh, judging by the <laughs> face sets that no, they the, they initialize the face sets on um, what's uh, here the face sets menu that allows you to initialize by pretty much anything. Um, I think we're gonna be seeing this uh, more. So you can initialize per face set, and you can initialize per. Um, per loose part and per color filter. So this is one as per face set and per mesh filter. So here, this is my face set and then mask, random mask, uh, initialize and then it makes one. Oh, what? Based on the value? Or how is it? Ah, I guess it has a threshold setting. Super nice. And the mesh filter, the other video here, random per loose part and color filter. So per, so let's see how, how is it? Mask, random mask per loose parts. So the um, mesh islands, the ones that are not connected, it will make masks based on that. Interesting, and then you use a color filter, so it's really fast. Um, if you want to change the hue, for example, of some of the uh, areas of your mesh, the, the loose parts in this case for the hair is super nice. You just have a different value for each one of those. Um, so it's, it's random, so you have to, I guess you it's, it's good to try it multiple times um, until you get what you want, but for quickly um, prototyping is super nice. Mm, let's see. Next. Sculpt is... I uh, think we're done with this. There is... Okay, shall we jump into the most exciting topic of the day? Um, no, 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 no. Let's go. Let's go in parts. So, okay. Another topic. <laughs> user interface. Um, since we are talking about sculpting, the other... Um, user interface improvement that was done for sculpting is that now the show texture in texture tab button the one that I last week I showed you that is now um, available in the sample texture node 
or anything that is related to textures in the notes you can click on a button and it will open the texture tab in the properties editor now this is available as well in the sculpt texture thingy popover another feature is that now in the right click menu so when you right click on a um, setting for example now you can copy the full data path um, there was an, uh, there were an attempts in the past to have this um, to have this added but there was even a patch from like forever ago from like 2014 really long ago um, but finally this one got in this one this is some of them I don't even know why is it open this should be closed because it was already added um, and also this should be and this is super old like this is not uh, valid anymore all of most of these changes were done anyway um, in 2.8 so the change is that now if you're especially if you're doing drivers for example or writing add-ons or doing any kind of scripting it's uh, super handy to copy the full data path not only the data path itself so for like the last bit of of the rna uh, property but the entire path let's see what system does pablo use i have a system pc okay I'm, I'm reading the chat i have a i use linux i use pop os and i have a if i go to the about menu i have this very retro <laughs> icon i have a intel core i9 and uh, quadro rtx 4000 which was very uh, nicely um wow they have no i have i have a laptop by box um, some years ago at uh, Seagraph, my my laptop got uh, stolen, and the people from Box on the spot at Seagraph they gave me a laptop, so I'm forever grateful. Um, and you should check it out. It's really I think it's this is the one I have, the 17 RTX 4000. Um, super super nice. And I haven't had issues with it, and it's 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 a, it's a beast. It's like this this thick so this thin super super thin and with a rtx 4000 it's not cheap at all but um it's a uh, super good as a workstation and it looks very nice it doesn't look like a gaming machine all right uh, more into the notes so this is a user interface i didn't put this new with the other geometry nodes updates because this affects um shading nodes and texture and any any other area in blender including compositing nodes this is a change that makes the uh, group input and output nodes to be in the group um, uh, in the group category so in the past if you were for example making some um, shading and you wanted to have a if you and if you had a group inside of the group the group properties will be in input and in output and it really um maybe it makes sense in a way back then but um, we have a group um, category which works better for other uh, nodes for other types of nodes for example um, in geometry nodes we don't have output yet so um but we have group because there are no not groups so it makes sense to have group input and output um, so yeah, this change is um, everywhere in Blender. It's for other, for all the geomet all the nodes, geometry nodes, shading nodes, everything nodes. Okay. I think we can we can go into the epic. Shall we go about the new? Shall we talk about the new editor? Nah, not yet. Okay, a little bit of uh, everything. Responsive slash animation. <laughs> So, Grease Pencil, now when you uh, run the Interpolate tool, they keep improving this tool. I, last week I, I talked about a lot of improvements in this operator that now is a tool, but now um, this improvement of this of last week makes it so now you can use Interpolate with all types of keyframe, not only um, keyframe type, you can do with any other type except breakdown, just the breakdown type, you cannot use it. So if you're not familiar with it, it's the it's in the animation 
for example, if you do to the animation and you have keyframes, so in different frames, did you know you can press R, wait, in the timeline, if you have the timeline open, for everything, you press not R, not T, I, <laughs> I had to look into my keyboard, I was pressing T as R for changing the keyframe type, so moving hold, extreme, jitter, or breakdowns. Um, they are internally they're all pretty much the same but um, they they look different and they allow you for example in Grease Pencil if you have breakdown keyframes that look like this you can make a um, cleanup you can clean you can run the cleanup operator and it will clean your um, your timeline or your dub sheet keyframes from those breakdown uh, keyframes and the last but not least, since we're talking about slash animation, graph editor improvement alert. We don't see this often, the, the graph editor, but we are gonna because the developer that made this uh, improvement, Wadey Mouse, he is actually uh, granted a Blender development fund um, grant. So he's he, like, you know, the money from this thing, from the Blender development fund, now it's also going to the animation uh, department because Wade Moss is working, is part of the animation module and he's working um, on it. And one of the improvements this week is the um, is a toggle to show or hide the extrapolation curves in the graph editor. So if you disable extrapolation, um, the, the drawing of the extrapolation, this curve that, for example, has a modifier for cyclic. Um, would be cut if you disable it. It will be cut at the end of, at the end and at the beginning. And if you enable it, you can see how it progress. So um, super handy. It's a it's in the graph editor. It's a setting for the entire editor. It's not per core as far as I know. Um, but yeah, you toggle it in the graph editor. View show extrapolation. So yeah, super nice to see the graph editor getting some love and attention finally. All right. Let's uh, let's let's uh, let's talk. Let's stretch. It's a new editor alert. New editor. How often do we see a whole new editor? And this one is pretty pretty. It's not a sub editor or some other class. You know, like a, the image editor is also the UV editor um, or the render. Uh, preview, but they are pretty much the same internally. They are the same, but this one is a completely new editor, which uh, has the first use case for geometry nodes. But in the future, it will be for pretty much anything. Hopefully, like it should be part of the workflow for any any area in Blender: animation, modeling, sculpting. Now, sculpting, I don't know. Yeah, pretty much any any area in Blender will benefit from it. So. Without further ado, here I present you the spread. <laughs> I should say it all in one word: spreadsheet editor. Tan tan tan. So let's see it in action. How does it look? Well, it looks like a spreadsheet. You know, um, Excel. You know, um, <laughs> um, Google Docs. You know. Uh, well, it most softwares has it, like uh, Houdini has it, and, and yeah, it, it's pretty pretty handy. So basically, it's a table representation of data, any kind of data. So, for example, if I if I start, um, so like when you start Blender, for example, you just start like this, right? Um, but if you want to see information about your about your scene. You have the outliner, right? You see what are the active objects. But if you want to see more info about this current object right here, or in the future, other objects, like other types of data. But it does not go there because it's not implemented yet, but it's in the future. The spreadsheet editor will look like this. As soon as you open it with the default cube, the beloved default cube, it looks like this. 
what is it? It's a uh, it's a list, right? You have a list of um, items. You have an ID or a value on the left side, and it has seven items plus zero, so it's eight. One corresponds to each vertex. Then each vertex has position X, Y, and Z. And that's it. For now, that is all that is going to show. If you enter edit mode, though, you will see that there is this selected only, so you can actually limit to whatever you have selected. Pretty nice. Then, um, why there is so much room? Well, because you can actually see more things from this. Um, there is more to this cube than meets the eye. <laughs> this cube, this default cube, has a lot more, and we can see it here. So, the first um, drop down that you see here is the final or the original. So, for example, if I have a, uh, if I add a subsurf um, with the control one, or like uh, you add the modifier subsurf, then suddenly it's like, hey, there is way more data here. This is 26 vertex. Did you know that when you subsurf once, it has 26 vertex? Well, this is what you, you will see here in the, uh, in the viewport. So if you add more, then you have more items. And you can see here the rows number goes up. Let's hide the animation editor. So, so yeah, the f if, when you have it in final, it, it's everything. If you have it in um, everything you see in the viewport. If you choose original, it's basically what you see in edit mode, like this, um, without, without all the modifiers applied. So final is gonna, is, you see what you get. So let's, let's remove the modifier for now, just to not to make a mess. Then you have a uh, domain. You have, well, the data is first the component. It's a mesh or the point cloud. So in this case, it's a mesh. We're gonna see the mesh data. And then we see the domain, the attribute domain. So in this case, the points have this data. However, if you go into like edge, then you see suddenly, hey, there is some edge data. What is it? Well, creasing, for example. Uh, are the other ones exposed yet? Like if I mark this as sharp? No, not yet. But the, eventually, um, all this data will be shown here. So um, for the for the time being, it's creased. So if you change the creasing, you see, you see how these values update. Ooh. Uh, if you didn't know, the shortcut is Shift E for creasing. So super neat. You can see which one is like, okay, this edge right here. Then um, corner, there is corner data. What is corner data? In this case, UV mapping, because by default, the default cube comes with a UV data. So you have the coordinates of each one of the points and polygon or faces if you want. And here you're gonna find some interesting um, values. So there is a normal, right? So the, if, you, if I move this, I, I'm gonna see a bunch of normals changing, right? because the um, basically the normals of the faces are showing. So let's make it a bit more obvious. So there you go. It's changing, but also shading smooth. This is a new attribute that got exposed. And if you if I make this these faces, for example, smooth, then bam. At the moment, it's not possible to edit these values from here. So it's called an editor, but you can't really edit for the time being. At the moment, the first version is going to be only for um, read only. But uh, in the future, the idea is that you can click on it and, and switch the values or like double click and edit these, uh, these coordinates or maybe click and drag to change the, the values. But um, the same with material index. You can, uh, the, all these ex, uh, faces, they belong to this material, but if I add another index and I assign it to these faces, then you see, this is material index one. There is a lot of, uh, of user interface changes to improve this. For example, this is material index one. Yeah, but that's not even shown anywhere here in the list. How do I know that is one? And what if I have like a, thousand well you can't have a thousand oh yeah you can i think there is a limit to how many material slots i don't remember but <laughs> the idea is that you can see more at a glance what's what's going on 
and this becomes even more fun when you have more of uh, more attributes so when you add attributes in the geometry nodes editor you're gonna see them all here but um so far so good you're gonna see vertex groups so if you had a vertex group and you change the name you're gonna see it here um if you have a for example vertex colors they should also show up here as corner data yes so for example this is my vertex colors and then you have um, R, G, B, and a values for all of them so yeah super nice and um this this really it's night and day when working with uh, geometry nodes this is just 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 amazing it's um, like it makes debugging so much easier or understanding like if you're if if i was going to teach uh, blender now and even to very beginners just just showing them here to to learn about coordinates to learn about how how it connects how the data belongs to each component inside of the mesh it's a i think it's a good way to to make it more clear all right time to change hats well not change but almost keep the same geometry nodes there are a few nodes in a few new nodes in town the first one is an attribute convert node by charlie jolie charlie thank you for working on this attribute convert node provides a functionality to change attributes between different domains and data types before it was impossible to write a uv map attribute with the attribute math node since they did not output a 2d vector type um, for example it makes it possible to uh, convert into a uv map attribute so you can convert between domains and it should be automatic if the attribute already exists then the domain is uh, automatic otherwise it's going to use the source attribute domain or use the default domain points uh, so yeah pretty nice i don't think there is a file to test it here but um but um, you, it, it's just a matter of seeing the, the node itself. But I'm going to keep this open because we're going to see more. But if we see attribute converts, so many nodes already. You see you have the auto or, or the, the name of the, of the domain and then the type of value. So you have 2D vector, boolean colors, integer vectors, regular vectors or floats. Um, some of them you can tell already by the... Um, by the by the colors but some of them don't have like 2d vector and vector have the same um, same color so it's good to have to make this more clear i think the um, here the spreadsheet also should show the um the type so when you maybe click on an attribute or it should be like should be more clear i saw a tutorial the other day um, that uh, was explaining before the the spreadsheet was even there was explaining this using a spreadsheet um, like made by hand but uh, it, it specified the type of attribute and that's pretty handy I think maybe we can show it on mouse over in the with the status bar on so yeah I think also we need a view menu here because we need since we have a status bar we need to um, or a footer we need to hide it or show it um, right now it's a bit hidden you have to right click to to see it okay um more updates the other new node in town was added by fabian Fab fabian 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 in spanish is fabian so that's sorry i, I default to that fabian schemp schemp um this, ad, this patch adds um, the attribute removal. So if you have a bunch of attributes that you were just testing stuff and it gets a bit uh, a bit busy or a bit um, you don't want those attributes anymore, there were ways that you could like set them all to zero, but there was no real way to remove those attributes. Now you can, and it even supports multi. Um, you can you can remove multiple attributes at once. So if you are testing with a bunch of attributes and at the end you uh, and they are messing up your 
your spreadsheet, for example. In the future, there will be some filtering options that you can enable, so you don't you don't have been, you don't get overwhelmed by the amount of columns. Um, but for the time being, this is a good uh, workaround, and also it's good to to be able to do some cleaning. All right, uh, more the new attribute that is uh, available for geometry nodes is shade smooth i already showed this in the spreadsheet example but uh, you can see it here in action there is a it's a setting that you can basically just change on the fly to for making specific um faces flat or not or shade or, or smooth super nice as well thank you hans for working on it um, the same with the crease attribute. This was uh, I already showed it in the geometry notes and the spreadsheet. But um, Jack Luke made his patch and even made a video about it to tweak it. And because it's available there, you can change it. Wow, nice. <laughs> okay, it's a very cool example. So you can change basically the feel. You see, it's using the attribute fill, it's, ch it's changing the crease with this value, super simple. Then it's randomizing it between 0 and uh, the maximum. And with the seed, changing it is making some, uh, some flickering because it's changing the seed. So cool. The... You know what else is cool? Drag and drop. Drag and dropping. It's the coolest thing ever. Okay, so for that, let me use my pen. Um, for that, drag and dropping. We should have more of this in Blender. You know, in uh, Geometry Nodes, if you want to deal with objects, you have to add, you have to search for the object or go to Input and then Object Info. And then you have to uh, select, for example, if I have another object here, I have to select the object. Bam. So now this process can be done as easily as just drag and drop. And now you have a new object info node connected to the um, like linking to that object. Super, super nice. You know what else is nice? Well, the same with collections. If you instead of adding a new collection info, you can do collection drag and drop. Bam, it's here. Drag and drop from the outliner super super fast super easy like objects and then a light yeah why not it's an object info then um another thing that can be um that is going to improve this is uh you know you can also have the sample texture where you can sample a texture basically yes you can select the texture and um, then you get for example clouds and uh, so you have this cloud here so you can sample it and maybe distort the mesh in a way well instead of going through the trouble of going here and selecting and stuff you can if you already have the texture here available somewhere um, or for example if you have it here as a, as a brush you can just drag and drop it so drag and drop and now i add say attribute sample texture drag and drop for the win exactly like riley is saying in the chat <laughs> Everybody's freaking out. This is amazing. This is super nice. Does it work also with, for example, if I have Blender files and I have textures here? Would also work from the outliner? Wow, nice. This is amazing. Drag and drop textures, drag and drop worlds. Well, this can be added for more. Uh, uh, for more options. This was, I, I made the the idea patch um, time ago long time ago but not too long ago actually i think within a day or two so i was working uh on this actually it was midnight it was midnight 30 on a friday and on a th thursday night and i thought about, about about this idea so i made a task i made a video i made the demo cases i made it super super simple and straight to the point so if you're making like right click select proposals maybe this is a good uh, example of a very small tool um that very well ex well, well explained i mean it's a it's a video 
So I made this mock-up video um, and then um, when have multiple candidates, so this is the explanation. And then it was picked up immediately and within a couple days, Charlie already had a patch and he made a patch and it was reviewed, accepted by Jack today and it was added a few minutes ago before starting this uh, before starting this live stream. I think, right? Yeah, it was committed. <laughs> yeah, 15 minutes, 10 minutes before the live stream. Super cool. So you are getting the latest and greatest. With, oh yeah, by the way, this was added 10 minutes before starting the live stream. So you are not gonna see it in your, unless you compile your own Blender, you are not gonna see it, um, sorry, <laughs> um, today. You need to wait until tomorrow's build. So let's, um, what else? What else? So much. Oh yeah, in the, multiple input socket the um, the socket that has that allows you to plug in multiple multiple things so um, for example if you have a join so this socket that allows you to connect multiple items now you can um, for example if I have well anything really um, so if you have multiple now you can actually sort them so you can click and drag and moving them up for example and you can you can resort them so this order sometimes it doesn't matter for geometry it shouldn't matter most of the time sometimes there are uh there are some 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 uh, glitches here and there sometimes um within with the order of things but this allows the inputs to be reordered so i think it's how the attributes gets passed along but yeah. Why? What is this? Um, there is some discussion going on in the chat. Uh, I just noticed because now it's like, Pablo, what's your take on this? What is art? <laughs> so the question is like, what is art? And then I have to... Uh, um, and then there is like this thread going on. I don't know. Dudes, I'm showing you... Drag and drop magic. What are you discussing? Like, what is art? Easy. Chill. Enjoy. Enjoy the new features. <laughs> Why would you go into a Blender live stream sharing cool new stuff um, to discuss other other than how awesome? Like the the only thing you should discuss is how if this is awesome or the next thing is awesome. So drag and drop is art. Yes. But dropping NFT is not art, actually, it's pretty bad. So, geometry nodes, add attribute interpolation for polygon domain. So this, you shouldn't see much of a difference, um, but this is more of an internal um, for interpolating between uh, between domains, uh, polygon domains. So point to polygon, polygon to point, polygon to corner. So yeah, there is a demo file already to test. Thank you, Hans, for that. And then some uh, static, uh, some aesthetic changes. So, well, aesthetic change, naming change, subdivision modifiers. There are uh, two subdivision, two, two for two ways to subdivide your uh, your mesh in geometry nodes, and they have been renamed. Um, so, from subdivision surface is now subdivide smooth because that's what it does, right? It subdivides plus it also smooths the the surface uh, using Cadmut Clark um, um, subdivisions, but blah blah blah. But for the user, it's subdivide smooth. And the simple one is just subdivide. Why adding the word simple when <laughs> when it's just subdivide is is enough? Um, so yeah, this matches the um, the operators that you have for subdivision. So if you have, um, for example, subdivide. And then you have also subdivide smooth, so smooth, there, shade smooth, so, okay, I'm making a mess here, but uh, subdivide smooth, smooth vertices, and um, it should match, so more consistency, yay for consistency, um, performance improvements, always welcome, the point distribute node 
is now more performant. The example file, the three leaves example file, which is not super heavy, it gained about 14%, which to me is a lot actually, and here Hans says that it's not very much. The gain is likely larger for more complicated input instances with more attributes, um, but for me that's a lot, and especially when I hear this, that in more complex files it, the gain is going to be larger, so super nice. Don't be so modest, it's 14% is a lot, just, just do it 9 more times and then you get twice as fast. <laughs> okay, the other improvement um, transfer polygon attributes to points in distribute now so there is no change um, for the um, for the end user doesn't look like much but it will transfer the polygons so the faces polygons to the points in when you're using point distribute so if you don't know what I'm saying if you understand the word I'm saying then uh, might not affect you um, then there was a change reverting the vertex normal attribute that was added um, that I mentioned I think last week or two weeks ago and now there is um, it has been reverted for a better solution that it's um, related to faces and here's the commit so add a normal attribute for face normals um, you can read more info here about the decision and why it was changed but um, but yeah so far, it should be better for um, for general purposes. That was performance before. I mentioned, right, the, the improvement in performance for the point distribute node. Okay, let's talk a bit, a bit more about performance. This one in particular is in Eevee. Eevee. So, in Eevee, there is a performance improvement and I actually wanted to do a shout out to Mark Steed <laughs> Username Scumbag But hey Mark um, A Scumbag wouldn't, wouldn't make a, perf a performance improvement for an open source uh, project So hey, thank you Mark um, But yeah, it, this one affects um, when you're dealing with shadows and many um, objects When you have too many objects and the more objects you have the slower it would get, so awesome to see performance improvements and um, keep them coming, keep them coming. All right, changing gears to the outliner section. In the outliner, there is a new operation to uh, enforce resyncing of hierarchy. So if you're having issues with um, when hierarchies get resynced, for example, if you uh, reload the file or reloading files shouldn't have an issue, but uh, yeah, you can re you can enforce resync. Uh, there's an option for that. The this is more of a workaround, but hey, workarounds sometimes stick there for years. And in the experimental settings, there is now an option um, to disable auto resync in um, for library overrides. It's a um, it's also a workaround because some older files won't react nicely to the auto resync feature. Um, but yeah, it's hard to to tell this library stuff, uh, especially if it's older files. It it's hard to tell, so that's why there's an option if experimental is uh, enabled. The newer files, whatever you work on now and in the future, should be just fine. Okay. Last but not least, and another shout out to community improvements. So, well, also to the developers that are there around for ages. So, thank you, Bastian. Uh, but also, uh, community improvements. Siddhartha Yurkar, Sid017, made a patch, an improvement that makes it so the paint settings, the unified paint settings, those that are shared across multiple paint modes now have defaults so what happened is that if in the bug report that if you reset to default value some settings some specific uh, settings it will this it would always reset to zero because there was no default set so siddhartha went there added them and now this is fixed for everybody so and look how easy it was 
well I mean you need to know how to compile blender and know where to type and know what to type but here you have examples and he added it for this part in blender and now so easy easy peasy and bam it's now in blender so your contribution is here for everybody that is all okay I finished with the with the updates I think yes yes everything is there let's see I have four minutes to answer questions let's see how many we have <laughs> okay I made the uh, extending a little bit just just so we get to cover more of the questions and what is going on with the chat again why is there so many people here in there I mean no it's okay that there is a lot of people but it's just a weird bit weird that there is only 680 and the discussion there's so much discussion on maybe they are discussing which developer is the most awesome one Radvani Marton, first question of the day. Hi Pablo, what is the future of Blender? Hi, <laughs> just a, that's a short question. Uh, what do you mean? How do you compare Blender after everything nodes is completed to Houdini? What improvements will be made to the dynamics of Blender? Will Blender be able to produce Houdini-like simulations? Um... How would you compare Blender after everything node is completed? There is no such thing as, as everything nodes being completed. Uh, maybe more, comple more uh, complete, as in more areas in Blender converted into everything nodes. But there is really no, no such thing as completed. Like when, by, by the time Blender does a lot of things that this uh, that Houdini can do then Houdini is gonna be in a whole other league have you seen their uh, presentation of uh, last year I think it was one or two hours of just amazing mind-blowing things um, Houdini needs, uh, Blender is not a, a threat to Houdini at all because they are leagues ahead and also um, Blender's future is not to target to to any other software Blender is its own thing. It's a completely separate. It's just it's it's also not ta not ha like targeting other sculpting programs or whatever or other more general use programs. It's it's its own thing. I think um, I think the workflow between softwares is what it's important. That's why um, moving into a more USD um, file format and sharing with open formats. You know, like dropping that. Far from nice FBX and move into a uh, open source, well, GLTF or USD or Alembic. Everything that is open source is great, and other softwares working well with that open source is great. Um, when it comes to a be able to produce Houdini-like simulations, well. I don't. Uh, I don't think we're near. Nowhere near that. It's just um, dynamics will be improved. Yes, when there is uh, the more improvements in the interactive mode, um, physics nodes and stuff. But um, but yeah, it's um, the future of Blender. It's bright, but uh, it's hard to tell. Like two years ago, we knew that Blender future would be would be good but it like yeah open source you know um it's it's unpredictable how many people are gonna join the project how many studios are gonna switch to blender and what are they going to be their contributions to blender like tomorrow pixar says hey guys we're dropping uh, presto and we're <coughs> we want to use blender and contribute everything back to blender as like Okay, that's, that would be awesome, and they are free to do it, and um, would probably be a good idea to to bring those uh, improvements back. So yeah, it's hard to 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 see. Like it's yeah, you know, it's gonna be great, but it's hard to predict. The next question by Kaczynski says, Hi Paolo, and two links. Is there any chance to see this patch in Blender? Randomization in array could be very useful in many tasks. Um, <clears throat> this is from 2011, so 
10 years ago. Yep, 10 years ago. This was closed and archived. Um, so, wow, the old graphical even. <laughs> uh, so, 10 years ago, this was relevant. Now, uh, nowadays, this it's the, the it's a good moment to try this with notes um, at some point in the near future hopefully um, some of the modifiers that make sense to move to notes will be notes um, so array is a good candidate for that um, having an array setup here where you can also introduce with notes you can have presets that you could have for more advanced array or circular array that's another um, request from forever ago um, so yeah notes is a future with presets so the idea is that when you have for example bevel and you have it it looks like this but actually inside is all notes that would be awesome that that's like the the end game is to have um, modifiers that are that look like modifiers but actually you can go in the node tree and make them uh, better or worst <laughs> or make your own and save them so you can have here custom modifiers like a column with custom modifiers and you have your own that would be pretty sweet mm, next hi Pablo can you give more details about the hacking of the blender websites what happened and why well, we uh, we shared about it um, on Twitter. Um, basically, the Blender.org website uses WordPress, so there must have been some kind of vulnerability. Even though we we keep it up to date, like as soon as a new update appears, we update it, and all the security updates are automatically any are automatic anyway. But yeah, the reasons why on why or who made it not really clear it was an attack from i think the ips were located in in the united states but other than that like but that can come from anywhere right with the vpn jumping from uh, from place to other you never know when that comes from so yeah let's let's see another repost from wrong post oops sorry Hi Pablo, I wanted to ask, what happened to this patch for the voxel remesh modifier? Had many useful features like the Gaussian and Erosion fil filters as well as BD BDB based booleans. Is there any chance it might be added to Blender in the future? Again, this is a great candidate. Look at the amount of love this had. Um, yeah, this was added before Blender even had the, the voxel remesher itself, like the, the remesh. Um, like the remesh modifier before it had the voxel setting this was implemented so and before the new blender booleans um, I don't know I think now again this is another case where we will be great to have this as notes I said remesh uh, actually there is I think in everything notes like um, where in geometry nodes, I think there is a already a patch by the community about rem whoops, remesh, add remesh node. Yeah, there is a task to adding the remesh node, and there is a work in progress that works for yeah for voxel is working, and uh, yeah, so there is some work going on already. Super nice. <clears throat> then, um, Finn Smith, hola Pablo, do you think that tension maps will come back to Blender? And if, when? I've heard a lot about them recently and they really sound cool. I know, yeah, I've seen probably because of the awesome, I, I saw it on Twitter, um, the, the tests of a, a face, like, um, I think it was Blender, it was on Twitter. Uh, something about stress maps, something like that. It was a face doing like a like a weird. Yeah, I can't remember, but it was. Um, 
Ah, tension map. No, it, in, in Blender internal, they, they used to be called uh, stress. And uh, I think in this patch, it was called tension. Not a patch, it was just an implementation. Um, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. If you guys, girls, have seen it, please comment here. Because I haven't seen any updates on that uh, recently. All right. Um, how much time do we have? Okay, let's do five more questions. And because this has zero votes, I'm going to go to the bottom to answer the ones that have been uh, uh, asked before. Um, hi, Pablo. I was wondering, well, we, when will the, blend, the developers repair the packing of UDIM textures? Uh, maybe I can move to the other side here. Of Udim textures. As far as I know, Udim still doesn't pack accurately in one blend file, so you cannot use them, for example, in render farm like ship it. Um, I think that wasn't that on, like by design, that it wasn't possible. Don't remember. Um, no, sorry, I'm not. Uh, not up to date with what was the decision regarding that. I know that at some point it was made um, um, like a design choice that it wouldn't be packed. But I don't know at the moment what is the decision. Um, Hive Mind, is there any news on XR in Blender? When? <laughs> Modeling and animating real 3D view, will video editing and notes also be done in the 3D viewport? Yeah, video editing and notes. Moving away from 2D and more into the real world. Um, okay, that's a, a bunch of questions. The XR in Blender, there has been updates on the branch. I've seen there is even a new, there is a branch in Blender uh, in, in the server. It's called XR Actions. Um, Recently, as, as of like last week or two weeks ago, there was a patch about having presets for like actions, for like input stuff. I haven't seen anything done with that, but, and I didn't have time to test it myself, but there is, there is improvements going on in that area. I hope we can see it as soon as possible, but because it's not, a, it's done by the community, it's hard to, um, to, to see how far it is. Also, Ubisoft was working on some similar um, projects, so I don't know what is the what is the status of that. Um, vi video editing and notes also be done in the viewport. Why would you use, what would you use notes in the video editing, like for filtering maybe for filters like uh, DaVinci Resolve, but. Um, but yeah, video editing. Maybe I'm missing out on some really cool... Mm, feature. Me leporte. Box modeling issue. Hi Pablo, the main efforts in box modeling are put to add a bevel in dense meshes, especially after boolean operators. The main efforts in box modeling are put to add bevel in... This task has to be accomplished manually. It's very tedious, with uh, time-consuming and unpleasant. And since in Blender modifiers don't allow access to the underlying geometry, we are forced to apply them, breaking the non-destructive workflow. Are coming some solutions to solve this problem and enhance modeling? Will the bevel operator get improved? Um, I don't know if I really see the. Wait, sorry, I'm not extremely familiar with this, but uh, by reading the question, the main efforts in mosque modeling are to put bevel in dense meshes. So if you have so if you have a lot of polygons, for example, and you're using and you add bevel, that's when it becomes tedious, time consuming. Because Blender doesn't allow access to the underlying geometry. Well if it's a modifier you can't access that unless you apply to the right? However, wouldn't this be accomplished with the new geometry nodes? Um, I know it's not as fast as box modeling, but um, I don't know. In these cases, maybe if you have a video showing how it, like the the how it should work, maybe it's more. I I'm it's hard to see. What you enter edit mode and then you 
have access to all the vertices like when using the cage um, sorry had to to picture it um, Aaron, will it be possible to use boolean geometry now to operate on procedural geometry? Currently, if uh, you use a geometry output, will it be possible to use boolean geometry now to operate on procedural geometry? Yes, absolutely, I think. Um, as an input to the boolean node, the boolean node only uses base object geometry. For example, add a point distribute and point instance to the default cube and use the point instance output as the input to a boolean node ah no then you have to convert to real geometry right instead of the boolean using this instance geometry it uses the default cube geometry this is both an intuitive and seemingly non-useful yeah that sounds um like a limitation maybe of of performance like you would have to access the real geometry instead of the instance geometry to do a boolean on the new geometry so i don't know if that should be a new node or how how is, how is it dealt with in other softwares um to me by the looks of it it sounds like a performance uh, issue okay um i think i'm done okay one one more okay temedix and because temedix is a bronze blender development fan supporter um, hey pablo is there any hope for implementation of this patch that adds support for windows input method editor what is this um, what does it do um, so you can type and then ooh. so you can change different languages Ah, this kind of a, wow um, I'm not familiar with it actually I have the first time I see it it's uh, what is the status of it so if I go to the last comment like the last comment is from april um this patch will probably solve those problems um in this case i think the best is just to ask what is that very nice ask nicely like hey uh, what is the status of this um i think as developer if if the feedback was good and the developer is still updating this um, the best thing is to just ask what is the status of this. Maybe the developer is like, hey, nobody is really bothering in like, you know, there's like four likes and really not a lot happening. So in that case, I think it's better to to um, to ask in the developers themselves directly. Okay. I think it's time to wrap it up. It's over an hour. Gee. Okay. How have you been? How's the chat today? Today well, the chat was a little bit crazy. I don't know exactly what happened. I was trying to see the news and there was like vroom, updates. Um, the new editor for spreadsheet and the new notes and all these big changes are here because we are getting close to the Beacon 2 phase of a release. What does it mean? It means that for a while, for a few weeks, a month actually, the development of big new features is gonna be on hold because the these features have to be more stable and have to be more complete, you know, like the spreadsheet is a whole new editor, so okay, bam, it's added in Beacon 1, the, the first stage of the release. This release the stage of the release is over in two days on Wednesday. That's the last day where you're gonna see big changes, and uh, on after that for a, for a month there will be improvements on those um, features. So it means that there will be for the spreadsheet there will be improvements, but no, there won't be a new editor again. <laughs> um, however, after that month of updates it's when the alpha of the next release starts or blender master yes internally is blender 3 but i don't know there might be an issue with uh, with pr you know people getting excited and people making videos of like blender 3 alpha like i know it's exciting but blender 3 alpha is gonna be exactly literally the same as blender 2.93 
beta on the same day it's gonna be the same just the number on the corner is gonna change so if you see those videos then uh, it's a clickbait <laughs> even if I make it it might be clickbait because there's nothing new uh, the same day you know that's that's what happens when you develop in the open you can't keep surprises for too long however we can continue meeting every week just to see what are those little surprises we can still have surprises in a week by week basis so what about meeting next week same place same time what do you say what do you think i want you to what <laughs>